Hello, welcome to the video on how to plan and write a proof. This will be a lesson on this topic and let's go ahead and take a look at our objectives here. Okay, so first of all we're going to review the purpose of a proof and then we'll talk about uh, the reasons allowed for proofs and this is going to be focused on uh, the proofs that we're going to be using in geometry okay because this is such a large topic this is really the essence of mathematics this idea of proving things so it really becomes a very sophisticated topic but um, that's for more complex math so we're, we're kind of focusing our conversation here on uh, geometry and then lastly we'll understand the general planning and construction for a geometric proof okay so why are we even doing this why are we concerned about concerned about proofs so let's just review the purpose of a proof basically a proof is to determine whether a particular mathematical statement is true think of it as um, math court you know if you you're uh, you know you have to go um, uh, to court you know let's say you're a defendant you know then you have a two lawyers you have the prosecutor the, the defendant uh, um, you got a jury, you got a judge, and they're going back and forth, and everyone's trying to claim their side to be proved, um, you know, beyond a reasonable doubt, if you will. And same kind of thing here um, with a mathematical statement. So if you make a particular mathematical statement, say for example, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and let's say we're talking about right triangles. And uh, we start noticing this relationship. And let's say it's, you know, we're living a few thousand years ago. We said, you know what, every time I have the sides of these right triangles, when I square them and then add them up, it always uh, comes out to be um, equal to the square of the hypotenuse. Well, we know this is Pythagorean theorem. We know this is true. But let's suppose we didn't know it was true. You know, you would kind of take it to math court. And you would say, okay, listen, this is, uh, I want to prove this particular statement, and you have to prove it to a jury, you know, if you will. And this is kind of the idea, the general idea of a proof. You need to be able to have a, a, a rationale, um, the evidence and reasoning to prove a particular mathematical statement is true. Now, if you can't prove it's true, well, then, then you know, we can't really rely on it totally in mathematics. So... Let me go ahead and just uh, talk about these two words here. A theorem is a mathematical statement that we can prove or in fact proved to be valid. Okay, and of course um, we proved it valid by using you know proper logic and uh, sound reasoning. Okay, so if we can actually prove something in mathematics we kind of classify it as a theorem. Now this word here, conjecture, you might come across from time to time and um, what it means is it's a particular statement we believe to be true but we can't prove okay so if we say oh well, that's all conjecture you might hear you know in conversation well that's just conjecture you know somebody makes a claim which means that hey they, they believe it to be true but they can't prove it okay so in mathematics uh, you know these statements that we make that we can't prove we classify them as conjecture if we can't we have a conjecture in fact we can prove it it becomes a theorem all right, so let's go ahead and talk about the reasons allowed for proofs. And we'll talk about the construction of um, a geometric proof here in a second. Now, before I really get into the actual reasons, remember, we're going to be using deductive uh, reasoning. And this is a particular topic that we went over in a previous lesson. So hopefully you, um, you know, you're familiar with it. But basically, it's a, it's a logical step-by-step -step process to make a claim and then have a particular um, supporting reason for that claim okay so if I'm making a statement I need to kind of have evidence to back that particular statement up and that evidence um, or these justifications are these reasons that you're allowed to have in a particular proof okay now these are the proper reasons you're allowed to um, uh, use to support whatever claims you're going to construct in a uh, proof all right okay so here they are basically is it the first thing is given information so you'll see here we're going to be doing some examples um, here in a second but the first thing is if you're asked to prove something you can use uh, the given information so for example if I said a squared plus b squared equals c squared okay and I said a and b are the sides of a right triangle and c 
is the hypotenuse, well, that's given information. So you're allowed to use that. Um, Whatever is given to you as part of uh, the reasons and a proof. And then you should be using the definitions um, that we've been going over, like the definitions of perpendicular lines or the definition of a right triangle. Um, uh, all these different type of definitions that we're going to be studying through geometry are also valid reasons you can use in a proof. Of course, postulates are big reasons uh, we, we like to uh, use in proofs. And postulates, remember, are are basically mathematical statements that we we accept at face value. Okay, these are un, unproved. We just accept them to be true. Okay, but we don't have an actual proof form, so they're called postulates. Another thing we can use is the properties of algebra, and uh, we talked about that uh, earlier. So that's, for example, like the reflexive property, um, the substitution property. And if you've been going through this particular course, you know, we've already covered this. So if, if you're not familiar with the properties of algebra, you want to go back and, um, you know, uh, take a look at that before you start getting into um, writing geometric proofs. And then the last thing is theorems. Okay, so we can use other theorems to help us prove mathematical statements, which, of course, are in and of themselves are going to be called theorems. Okay, sometimes they're called corollaries. There's even another word called lemmas. Um, you don't worry too much about that um, because there, there's uh, some subtle differences. But basically, you need to know that we can use theorems, and these are, of course, already proved mathematical statements to help us, you know, construct new um, proofs to uh, to determine whether a, a particular mathematical claim is true or false, okay, or valid or invalid. Okay, hope I didn't um, overwhelm you there, but just remember. Given information, definitions, postulates, properties of algebras, and theorems, if your justification or reason that you're supporting a particular statement, if it doesn't fall under one of these categories, then it's it's not a valid uh, it's not a valid justification for your statement. Okay, it's got to fall into one of these categories. All right, so plan and construct a proof, and I'm going to keep this general here because. The first rule is there's just there's not one way to write a proof. Okay, there's simply not one way, and I think this is what really uh, frustrates students is sometimes when they see the answer or the solution to a particular proof, and yours came out different. Um, your proof could be valid. It may not be as eloquent or um, you know um, you know nicely written, if you will. But if it follows the correct logic and it has the cor correct reasoning, um, the steps that we just talked about. Well, you know, it could be it could be just as valid. Um, so there's not necessarily one way to write a proof. It's just like um, a lawyer trying to prove if someone's guilty. There's there's many different ways that that could, you know, you could prove someone guilty. You can provide you know um, you know any particular strategy to determine that or to reach that goal. So you need to kind of think like. You know, I guess an attorney, you know, you have to kind of think of a strategy and your strategy might be different than mine, but they might be equally as good. As long as you're providing the right evidence, okay, and this is the key thing to remember, as long as you're providing the correct and valid evidence allowed in the courtroom of math, if you will, and this is the evidence that we're talking about in geometry, then you'll be okay. All right. So this is general planning and construction of a proof. All right. And I really wanted to take some time to emphasize that. Okay, but here's some more specific guidelines that you want to follow. And the first one is we always want to use that give, given information to draw an illustration, to draw a figure. So if you don't have a particular figure or if one's not given to you, then you want to have a picture. Okay, so you definitely want to use whatever's given to you to draw a picture, just like this example of the Pythagorean theorem, um, how we just drew a little right triangle and show that A. And B were the sides of the right triangle, and C was a hypotenuse. This is the general idea here. Okay, there should always be a picture with your proof in geometry. All right. The next thing is to write an outline for the statement of uh, statements and reasons for the proofs, and that's going to look like this. Okay, it's going to be very simple. It's going to be just like a little um, table right here, and you write statement here and reason over here. Okay, so here we're going to be making our statements, 